So here we have the commander's office. All right. Looking down the row of porches from the commandant's office here. Looks kind of cool. Okay, well, I'm coming into the commandant's house and it appears he has a little puppy dog. He's watching because his mommy's heading off. So I guess we do have windows here that we need to look through. Let's see what we can see in here. Looks like we have a picture of Abe Lincoln up there on the wall. Interesting uh, decorations though. On this side, we have a bedroom. And a doggy that wants his mommy. Sorry for the glare. I don't know what I can really get over here like this. Kind of cool though. Let's go take a look at the picture. Yeah, here's just a, another view into that bedroom. Pretty fancy headboard there. And on this pretty dark back here, so I don't know how grainy it's gonna be. I assume the children would have been back here. All right, so coming out of the children's bedroom, looks like the children could sneak out pretty easily. Looks like binoculars on the table there. Not sure. Hmm. Sorry for that, folks. I can't really see in there very well, but it looks like, aha, we can go in and not see very well. Looks like the dining room down in the hallway there through those doors. And then I guess this would be the guy's library study. Some family picture. I have to try to put everything in my shadow so you can see. Pretty cool lamp, huh? It's a hospital back there, and we're going to be heading back there after the next uh, place here along Officer's Row. All right, so for our last building here along the Officer's Row, we have a shared lieutenant's quarters, and this one is supposed to be furnished as well, which means we get to look through some more glass. So I'm going to make the assumption that each lieutenant had his own side. I wouldn't mind having a little furnished place like this myself. Yeah, I think that might be a pump organ back in there. And then looks like this officer had the long area. And then maybe the other one had a it's wider, I don't know. Oh, this is interesting. We have a baby stroller and a sewing machine. Looks like an old treadle machine. So I wonder if this was maybe a married officer had this. Looks like we have a fireplace in the corner there. All right, we'll go over and check this guy's place out. Okay, well, it looks like there were two officers here. One was married and one was in. This guy got the short end of the stick, the single guy. I'll go in from the other window. It's a nice large room, but all he's got is a cot to sleep on. Interesting chair, huh? So that's it for uh, Officer's Row here, and I guess now we'll be on our way to the hospital building. In fact, it's this way. In Officer's Row, we have a privy, but then we also have enlistment barracks, but this was 1856 to 1862. So it's real interesting, the various barracks are all different time periods. Obviously that one there would have been up through the beginning of the Civil War when the federal troops left the fort and the Confederates took over. Good chance they demolished or burnt the building, which was pretty common back in those days. We're at the hospital. And the first I'm going to go through is Ward 1. I'm actually changing my mind because there's people in there. Didn't actually say what this was through here. Well, the dysentery got died. No surprise. Let's see, that's a pewter castor oil spoon, a wooden mouse screw, and a tongue depressor. Exciting, huh? Interesting.
Now they didn't have any sort of antibiotic. They pretty much were weighing it. We were reading about one little girl who had a, some kind of a throat ailment and they made her gargle with sulfurous acid. It didn't say sulfuric, it said sulfurous. Go ahead. The hospital, the hospital steward and matron, well, no, ex-private and his wife lost their seven children within two weeks to diphtheria. Well, most of the deaths here were from diphtheria, possibly cholera, smallpox, and dysentery. Yeah, that's cool. Do you have skeletons in your closet? Oh, it looks like we have a pith helmet right over there up on the man with a bowie knife. A duck. Bunch of medical books here. Ain't not a whole lot of knowledge in those books. At least if they date back to that time. Must have done uh, some kind of procedures in his office as well. Some of his tools there. These are all very, very dark rooms, so hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, graffiti on the wall in 1957. This began in okay, so they started restoring this place in 66. Obviously not a whole lot of restoration in here. And there you go. If you need a toilet. I'll tell you, it looks like a terrible bedpan, but given the ones that they have these days, oof. Look at that. I guess it's some kind of a leg thing. Yeah, let's see, maybe they'll tell me somewhere. There's one of the treatments for you, arsenic. Commander's wife. You had morphine for an upset stomach. So this was Ward too. However, it had 12 beds, but as you can see, it's got a carriage in it, of some sort. Probably a undertaker's carriage the way it looks. All right, well, we'll go back through into uh, the other ward on the other side. All right, so we actually see now the hospital ward. It's interesting, most of the, most of the mannequins have been Buffalo soldiers. <laughs> like that pot right here, close in. So they made the high ceilings and the large windows so they could get 1,200 cubic feet of airspace per bed. I don't know if you remember when we were at Fort Stan, they had the outdoor tents for the um, consumption or tuberculosis patients. And the idea was they needed a lot of good dry desert air. I hope you enjoyed uh, Fort Davis here. We had a lot of buildings, a lot of ruins to go through, and uh, there's probably a few things we miss, but um, <laughs> we have to get on the road. We've got about 220, 230 miles to go and had a couple more stops and it's almost noon. So right now we are headed out to a place called Hunts Hole. And it's a uh, BLM area where you can boondock. If we're in southern New Mexico now. That's right, we are in southern New Mexico now. And uh, the road sometimes gets kind of sandy, but you know, you can kind of see right now, other than just being a little bumpy, it's not really washboardy. It's uh, pretty well graded. 
one's Hunt's Hole out here, and then there's a Kilborn Crater, or Kilborn Hole, I'm not sure. So, uh, talk about them a little bit more. They are volcanic, but they're not like, you know, craters from like your typical lava eruption. They're more like heated gases formed underneath the earth. And then as they escaped, the land subsided. Actually, it's a Mar. <laughs> They're both Mars, M-A-A-R. I believe Kilbourne's close to a mile across and Hunt's Hole's just a little bit smaller, but. <laughs> and here's a cow. There's a cow. Several cows. Normally we go through where I have to open a gate. I left the camera on because I thought we were. Well, we did make it here to Hunt's Hole. And uh, I was going to fly the drone this evening, but there is a bit of a wind. And even though I think the drone can handle the wind, take the chances and maybe uh, do it in the morning, be a little more secure. But yeah, so the area is uh, pretty nice. We'll take a look here. I thought this was kind of cool area right here. Let's get in closer to these swirls. There we go. Anyway, I think that looks pretty awesome. And we're camped right next to that. And Trier's excited because this is the first time he's been able to run around and play. All right, so let's take a look out. Yeah. Take a look out there. Looks like a deep area out there, maybe it gets water collecting in it off the rim everything that flows down let's take a walk out to the edge uh, so looking at it from a wide angle perspective it is desert they're still in the desert we did have one little uh, side by side go by which is not unexpected and if you look around here, you'll find a lot of shells from people shooting. We actually were over on the next outcrop the last time we were here. We drove over there first, but it was covered with glass. And the last time we were here, it was also covered with shells. When I say we were over there, we were just camped up a little bit back over that way. But we thought we'd try something different. We got nice and level, which is always great. So you can see a little bit of lava rock. And I think they, it was really difficult for me to understand exactly what they were saying about these Mars and the gas. So it's, it's super heated volcanic gases. And then when it builds up, it escapes and it does send up some uh, things I think in Kilbourne there's supposed to be like a rock um, rim that's caused by the uh, gases but I'm not really sure about these this volcanic layers if they're from the eruption that happened here that created Hunt's Hole or if they're from maybe another lava flow from another part of the area here so anyway it's a very nice evening. It's about 68 degrees, a little breeze. The sun's hot, but the breeze is great. Yeah, tomorrow we're headed up to around Portal, Arizona, and hopefully we'll get the campsites we want. Hopefully we'll be able to get the drone up and see those beautiful cliffs around there. So something to look forward to. I'm looking forward to it. So we'll see you then. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and like and subscribe. Much appreciated. We'll see you in a bit.